Okay, Hare Krishna. Welcome everyone this morning to this first lesson, first class we're giving here during this three-day, four-day convention. Mm. There's a lot of other speakers also giving classes at the same time. Quite a few people wanted Tamil seminars, so there's some very nice Tamil speakers who have come from India to give classes. <coughs> so, we wanted to talk here about Bhakti Yoga, which is our real mission in becoming devotees. So one of the important points we want to understand is what is pure devotional service? Because often people come to Krishna consciousness with many different ideas. And we heard this morning during Banu Swami's class how people can understand the Absolute Truth in many different ways. He was mentioning that important verse from the 10th canto where Krishna comes into the wrestling arena in Mathura. And different people all saw Krishna in different ways. Hmm. Kamsa had brought Krishna and Balaram there to Mathura and arranged the wrestling match. And so many other people, all the people of Mathura also came to see. And the people had some devotees, Nanda Maharaj, the cowherd boys, they'd all come from Vrindavan. And so they'd all come to see this wrestling match. Mm. You know, it was a big event in Mathura. And it was in the in the a special arena. There was a, a special stadium which was there, and the wrestling match was to take place inside the stadium. So, Banu Swami was listing all the different moods of the different people there. Right. Kamsa, he saw Krishna as death personified. And the wrestlers who were going to fight with Krishna, but they saw Krishna like a thunderbolt. Mm. But the ladies of Mathura, they saw Krishna as the most wonderful Cupid. And the, the cowherd boys, they saw Krishna as their friend. So all, all the twelve different rasas, there are twelve rasas which devote people can have with Krishna. Of course, 
five are direct, they're the, the devotee rasa. But there are seven which are indirect. And some different times, different moods and are exchanged between Krishna and these different people. So this the science of pure devotional service, this was instructed by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to Rupa Goswami. You can see in the illustration here. There's Rupa Goswami. He was already older man when he gave up working for the Muslim ruler. He was working over in a place called Ramakeli. It's a wonderful place. Many cows and a very peaceful Beautiful green place, many trees. Rupa and his brother Sanatan were living there and they were recreating Vrindavan there. But they'd heard, but they, they had the un. The, the, they were in the unfortunate position that they were serving the Mohammedan ruler. Working for uh, people who kill cows, and who eat, eat the cow meat. So Rupa and Sanatan heard about Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And they wrote to him, and Lord Chaitanya came to visit them. And after Lord Chaitanya came to visit them, they decided they would give up everything and go to join Lord Chaitanya. So Rupa Goswami left home first. Sanatan, somehow he had some entanglements, he could not leave immediately. But Rupa Goswami, he left home and he gave away all, he, got, he arranged his money, he arranged his money, he gave half of the, his wealth to the Vaishnavas and the Brahmanas. <laughs> And he gave 25% for his family. And he, he kept some 25% for emergencies which he may have. So Rupa Goswami, he had a lot of wealth. It said his wealth was so great it could fill a boat. So when he gave 25% for his family, it, w it was a lot of money for them. They were, <laughs> they were well taken care of. So Rupa Goswami left the home and he went to find Lord Chaitanya. He heard that Lord Chaitanya was at Prayag. Prayag means the place where the Ganga meets the Yamuna. And uh, Lord Chaitanya was there at, at uh, Das Ashwamedha Ghat, a place called Dash Ashwamedha Ghat. He was stay he met Rupa Goswami there. 
And Lord Chaitanya instructed Rupa Goswami for ten days. And he instructed him in the science of devotional service. So then Lord Chaitanya told Rupa Goswami, he said, now you go to Vrindavan. And Lord Chaitanya said, uh, I'm, Vrindavan is a place for your family. He called it Prabhu Datta Desh, the place given by the Prabhu. So Rupa went there to Vrindavan. Later on, others came and joined him. There were already some people there in Vrindavan. There were a couple of other Goswamis there. But they had not been able to do very much. But Rupa Goswami came there, and later Sanatan came, and then later on their nephew Jiva Goswami came. After Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu disappeared from the world, then Raghunath Goswami also came to Vrindavan. And in this way they developed Vrindavan. And Lord Chaitanya also personally came to Vrindavan. And he discovered, he showed them where is the Radha Kund. And he, uh, in this way, he was establishing the, the different places of Krishna's pastimes. And so Lord Chaitanya told the Rupa Goswami and the others they should also write books about Krishna Consciousness. Just like Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati uh, Prabhupada, he wrote books on Krishna Consciousness. And he told also his disciples, he wanted them also to write. So Srila Prabhupada also took that instruction seriously. And one of the books which Prabhupada wrote was, this, was the book called Nectar of Devotion. And it was based on the the book which was written by Rupa Goswami, which was called Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. Rupa Goswami wrote several books, but the most famous of his books is this Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. And in his he based his book on the teachings he got from Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Rupa and Sanatan were direct disciples of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Previously, they had most. They, they were called Dabirkas and Sakara Malik, they had Muslim names. Right. So Lord Chaitanya made them Goswamis. One of them, and this is Rupa Goswami. And Rupa Goswami wrote this very important book the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. 
When Srila Prabhupada was initiated by Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada, at that time he was told by his Guru Maharaj that you should study carefully Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. You have to, he wanted very much that you should study the science of rasa, relationships with Krishna. So, taking that instruction from his Guru Maharaj, our own Srila Prabhupada began to study very carefully Bhakti Ratsamrita Sindhu. And he got, and he, then when he went to America, he was able to, be, to publish the book. So we can chant this nice verse here. This is one of the memorization verses for the, our Bhakti, is it Bhakti Shastri course? Yes. Yeah. Right, Bhakti Shastri, we like devotees to study the Bhakti Shastri course. And some devotees say, don't like to do it. They say, oh, no, no, I don't have time. But it's very important for us to study the books. And Prabhupada liked us to learn the slokas. And that when Prabhupada was here every morning, he liked to go for a walk with the devotees. And when we would walk, he would talk, and sometimes he would bring up some philosophy, and he would ask, what is the sloka? I remember even the very beginning of our movement, we did not even have the Bhagavad Gita with the Sanskrit verses. But Prabhupada was still asking, what is the sloka? We, we didn't even know it, we'd never seen the slokas. But somehow, sometimes there would be somebody from a Hindu family who knew the sloka and Prabhupada would say, oh, very good. So Prabhupada was always encouraging us to learn some sloka. And how to learn the slokas? You have to recite them regularly. If, if every day you recite them, then you start to remember them. Just like every morning we sing the Guru Vastikam and we sing also Guru Vandana and you know, of course, when we sing it every day, you start to know it. So these slokas, they are full of spiritual power. If you recite them, they will give you also spiritual energy. And they make it easier to remember Krishna. So you can repeat after me this. Anya Bila Sita Shunyam. Anya Bila Sita Shunyam. Jnana Karma Jnana Vritam. 
Anukuyena Krishna no Anukuyena Krishna no Shilanam Bhakti Rutama Anya Bilasita Shunyam Jnana karma jnana vritam Jnana karma jnana vritam Krishna no Anukuyena Krishna no Shilanam bhakti rutama Shilanam bhakti rutama Anya bilasita shunyam Anya bilasita shunyam Jnana karma jnana vritam Yana Karma Yana Anuko Yena Krishna no Anuko Yena Krishna no Shilanam Bhaktir Uttama Shilanam Bhaktir Uttama All right, so here is the, the, trans, mean, the, the translation of this verse. When first class devotional service develops, one must be devoid of all material desires. Knowledge obtained by monistic philosophy and fruit of action. The devotee must constantly serve Krishna favorably as Krishna desires. So we have to understand there's devotional service which is not first class. You can read, for example, the third canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, Lord Kapila's teaching to Devahuti, and he describes devotional service in the modes. So devotional service in the mode of ignorance, devotional service in the mode of passion and devotional service in goodness are not first-class devotional service. What is pure devotional service is devotional service which is above the modes of nature. So we want to understand what it means to develop pure devotion. So here Rupa Goswami has described, he said, we must be devoid of all material desire. Of course, that's a big thing. We will think, well, I have so many desires. How can we be without desires? But we have to understand we can purify desires. And our desire, we cannot stop desire, but we can p control the quality of our desire. Banu Swami was explaining this morning how Srila Vyasadeva wanted people to come from the mode of ignorance, then to the mode of passion, then to the mode of goodness. So here, Rupa Goswami is describing that pure devotional service means to give up all material desires. And that 
we have that we can do by just simply changing the quality of our desires. Instead of just desiring for our own self and for the body, we have to desire for Krishna and Krishna's service. And, the, and we can do that without even thinking about it. You don't have to get all mental and think, oh no, I cannot give up my desires. We just have to engage in Krishna conscious activities. Just like this morning, we had a morning program. We went to the temple, we, well, we went to the ballroom, and then the ballroom we had our RT and we sang prayers, and we had some kirtan. And we had Tosi Puja, we chanted Japa, and then we, we, then we did Guru Puja, we, greet the, we greeted the deities, we did Guru Puja, and then we heard Srimad Bhagavatam. So we never had time for our material desires. All right, we were chanting, we were doing kirtan, we forgot about everything. We even forgot about what breakfast is going to be. And we forgot about where we're staying, what room we're in, or who, we, who we're with. Instead, we are in the big ballroom with 700 people, 800 people. So our desires were changed. So we, this comes about naturally by doing devotional service. And then also, Rupa Goswami says we, we have to avoid or give up knowledge obtained by monistic philosophy. So monistic philosophy, this is the, generally the philosophy of the Mayavadis. The Jnanis, those who practice Jnana Yoga are often monists. We are, we are dualists, we are not monists. Monists are thinking everything is one. It's all one. And they want to become one and the, they want to merge into the oneness. So that kind of knowledge is very contaminating to the consciousness. Why? Because we think, now I'm God. That I'm one, I'm God. You're God and we're all God. This is their mistaken philosophy. Before I became a devotee, I used to read a lot of these kind of books by the monist philosophers. Their books are uh, they're distributed everywhere, you can find everywhere. They distribute the book, their philosophy is very common everywhere. So when I first went to the temple, they asked me, do you know who God is? I said, well, yeah, of course, I'm God, you're God, we're all God. 
<laughs> and of course, just like you're laughing, they also laughed at me. And they taught me, of course, I'm not God, but I'm meant to be a servant of God. So we have to get rid of this uh, false philosophy that everything is one. At the same time, there is a oneness of desire. We want to have that unity of desire. We are, we, are, uh, we are trying to create unity out of diversity. We had a nice program just uh, the day before yesterday in Melaka. Some uh, one prominent government man came to our center there. And he was uh, very favorable to our Krishna consciousness movement. And he was talking, he was explaining to us how the policy in Malaysia is to create unity out of diversity. <coughs> because in Malaysia there are different sex people, you have the Islamic people who are the majority, then you have the Chinese people, and then you have also the Indian people. So there's a lot of diversity in the country. And naturally, the government want to keep the country peaceful. And they want to try make sure there is a unity among the people. Most countries, they have that kind of policy. Like in India, you have also many different groups, ethnic groups. So, in India, they always that we are all brothers. So, on the spiritual platform, there's a there's a oneness, but at the same time, there's a difference. So it was Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who gave us the philosophy that there's a oneness, but there's also difference. But the monistic philosophy is that it's just simply one. And any difference is illusion. So that kind of philosophy is not correct, not completely correct. So that knowledge has to be given up. And then the third thing which has to be given up is fruitive action. And that's a very common, a very common state of action in devotional service. That we want to get something out of our service to Krishna. So it's devotional service, but it's not first class. So we don't consider that doing service for Krishna with material desires to be pure devotion. Mm. We have to, we have to some, look also at our own self and consider our own self. What is our motive in serving Krishna? Mm. So, sometimes, you know, Tamal Krishna Goswami used to ask to me, he said, 
what do you want from Krishna? What do you want out of devotional service? So at that time I was I was doing some uh, work, I was cultivating different people. We were doing a life membership program and we were trying to get people to become life members. But there was one other devotee, his service was that he was he was doing a business and he was selling oil paintings. And he was selling a lot of paintings. And he would sell them to devotees all over the world. People would come to Hong Kong to buy oil paintings. And devotees would, you know, they were in different parts of the world to take these oil paintings and sell them. It was a kind of Sankirtan. Of course, not really Sankirtan, but, but the fruit was meant for serving Krishna. So I would say to Tomal Krishna Mari, well, I would like to be like him. I would like to have a business and <laughs> make a lot of money. <laughs> so that, that's a very fruitive desire. So we have to give up that kind of mentality. Mm. And then Rupa Goswami continues to describe what we should do. He says we have to serve, first of all, constantly. And in constant service means all the time we have to be doing service for Krishna. should go on, you know, all, every moment, round the clock. Mm, like, like we give the example of the, the convenience store. They have these 7-Eleven stores, you know, they're open all the time. So devotional service should be like that. It right? should be constant. The more we are on and off, you know, to, oh, today I'm a devotee, oh, tomorrow I'm tired, you know, I need a rest. No, today I'm going out with the, the, my old friends, they're not devotees. My, tomorrow I'll go with the devotees. Mm, we want to be careful. We want to be connected in Krishna consciousness every moment. So Rupa Goswami says, we must serve constantly and we must serve Krishna favorably. As Krishna desires, not just as we desire, but as Krishna desires. Devotee will do anything for Krishna. Just like sometimes in India, you know, they have, a, they have a system that, oh, there are certain class of people, their job is to clean the toilets and take the garbage out. So somebody else may say, I'm a Brahmana, I'm not going to do that. But a devotee will think, what's needed for Krishna's service? I should do whatever Krishna requires. So, 
service to Krishna must be as what Krishna wants. That's difficult to put aside our own ideas. Now, in the beginning, it's like that. But as you go on and become a stronger devotee, after some time, then you can focus more on what is the proper nature, your proper nature. Just like probably in, in the beginning of Krishna consciousness movement, some people joined the movement and they were good artists, they were very good artists, but they joined the Krishna consciousness movement, they came to live in the temple and they were told to go on Sankirtan. And they said, well, you know, I'm a musician, I'm an artist, I'm a, I'm a, I paint, you know. And they said, it's okay, just come on Sankirtan. First they go for Sankirtan and go on Sankirtan and learn also how to distribute Prabhupada's books. And in this way get some, get purification. And then later on, later on, they will get the chance to cultivate more, to do their own activity which is more suited to their nature. If you go to some of our temples, like in Belgium, Radadesh, there's a beautiful temple there, and they have original oil paintings done by the devotees. And similarly, other temples, like in Detroit or Los Angeles, there's many original oil paintings that devotees were spending all their time painting. But initially, they were doing Sankirtan. Later on, they became artists. There was one devotee he was actually born in Russia. But he joined Krishna consciousness in America. So, you know, at one point the devotees started preaching in Russia. So the, the devotee said, he came to Prabhupada, he said, Prabhupada, you know, I'm Russian, I can speak Russian. Should I help and go and help in the preaching in Russia? But Prabhupada told him, I said, you are an artist, you're painting beautiful pictures of Krishna. And your pictures are in our books. He said, by your painting, you're preaching to the whole world. If you go to Russia, you may preach to a few people in Russia. But by, by your painting, the pictures are preaching to the whole world. So in this way, Prabhupada encouraged him to continue with his painting. Some other devotees were very expert musicians. They would play guitar or they would, you know, they, they had some experience playing in a band, playing music. And sometimes they would get offers from uh, 
professional music bands. They would say, come and play in our group, come and join our group. But the devotees would say, no, no, I'm singing for Krishna and Balaram. Just like there's one devotee, maybe you know the name Indra, Indra Prabhu. He was a famous musician. He left the body some years ago. He, he was from America and he was living in Vrindavan doing kirtan there. And in Vrindavan, Prabhupada has the devotees do 24-hour kirtan. It never stops, summer or winter, day or night. The kirtan is going on all the time. So Indra Prabhu was leading and he was organizing this kirtan and getting the devotees to take part. And he did this service up until he departed from the world. But he told me, he said, at one point he said that some people came from a music band and they asked him, they said, why don't you come and join our group? We need somebody like you in our group. And they were quite popular group, they were quite successful, quite famous. But he said, no, no, he said, I don't want that. I'm singing for Krishna and Balaram. And similarly also Yamuna Mataji, the lady who sings the Govinda song every morning that we hear, she was also a, 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 a singer and she sometimes would sing also in a music group and people sometimes asked her, come and join us again, come and sing for us. But she said, no, no, I'm singing, for, I'm, I'm just, I just want to serve Krishna. I don't want name or fame or money. So these are some examples about the, the, the mood of pure devotee. Okay, so we want to understand the different characteristics which are there in pure devotional service. So there are two kinds of characteristics. One is, first of all, what is called Swarupa Lakshana or essential characteristics. Yeah, it must be there in pure devotional service. And the other is called Tatasta Lakshana. And that means marginal characteristics. I means sometimes will be there, sometimes not there. So the two different kinds of characteristics are being described. We'll come across this many times in studying the Krishna conscious philosophy. So Swarupa Lakshana. And there are three different characteristics which are mentioned. And they are all taken from the definition of pure devotional service. First one is this word anukulyena. 
and then Krishna, Anushilanam, right? Anya bilasita samyam, jnana karma jnana vrikam, anukuyena Krishna nu silanam bhakti uttamam. So these three words are from the second half of the definition. But these are the essential characteristics. We will explain more in a minute. And the temp the, the tatasta, the marginal characteristics are mentioned Anya Bilasita Shunyam and Jnana Karmatyan Avritam. We will explain more. Right? Anuku Yena meaning favorable. Anuku Yena hmm? mean it must be pleasing to Krishna. If you study the Bhagavad Gita, which I hope you're all doing, then in the 18th chapter, Krishna described to Arjuna, surrender to me. And Prabhupada in the purport then explains what is surrender. He explains surrender has six different characteristics. Right? The first one is to accept everything favorable to Krishna. And the second thing is to give up everything which is not favorable to Krishna. So this is important for us to meditate like this, to think, first of all, what is pleasing to Krishna? One devotee was making dresses for the deities. And she got the idea, she thought, you know, when she was making Krishna's shirt, she thought, I will put a pocket on Krishna's shirt and I'll put sweet balls in his pocket for him. Prabhupada told her, this is not how we offer sweets to Krishna. He told her, we make our offerings, we put a plate on the altar in front of Krishna. He told her, don't speculate about how to serve Krishna. We have to serve Krishna as we are instructed by the authorities. Our service to Krishna must be done in following the mood of the acharyas. So, how to know what is pleasing to Krishna? We have to hear from people who know Krishna. The spiritual teachers, the acharyas, they know Krishna and they guide us how we can please Krishna. So, first thing is pleasing to Krishna. And the second point is it should be done with the intention to please Krishna. So, when we are doing service, that our intention, our purpose, that we want to please Krishna. 
Because some, you may do something pleasing to Krishna and you may think, no, I, I don't know, I, I don't like doing this, but anyway, I'm doing it for Krishna if it pleases Krishna, but I don't, it doesn't please me. You may think it's pleasing to Krishna, it's, it doesn't please me. So if we think like that, that is not pure devotion. Just like if we say to someone, you go on Sankirtan, you go out and chant and do Harinam Sankirtan. No, I don't know why they send me out on Sankirtan. I don't like to go on Sankirtan. So if we go in that mood, that is not devotion. We want to please Krishna. So the attitude in which we perform our service is very important. That, that that mood must be there that I want to do this for Krishna's pleasure. And this is Anukoyena. It's favorable. And then we said Anukoyena Krishna. It must be in relation to Krishna. So what do we mean when we say Krishna? What do we? Who do we mean? Which Krishna? Because Krishna has so many different forms. He has so many incarnations. So maybe we heard this morning he has appeared different and different species of life. He comes on, among the demigods as Lord Vamana Dev. And above and among the humans he comes as Krishna and Rama. He comes among the animals as Lord Varaha. And he comes among the the fish as Matsya. So He's appearing in so many different forms of life. So what do we, when we say Krishna, what do we mean? So, as Prabhupada explains to us in his introduction to the book, that Krishna means, along with, it means also his personal expansion. And, and it includes not only such expansions, but also his pure devotees. And so, like Srila Prabhupada, we respect Srila Prabhupada as being one of the representatives of Krishna. And all the acharyas, we honor their appearance and their disappearances. Because they are all in relation to Krishna. Mm -hmm. And then, Anushilanam. Anu. Right? Just Anuradha. So, Anu means to follow or constantly. What's wrong? Something on the screen, so they are checking it. That is okay. No, no betting. No betting. Alright, so Anu Shilanam. Constantly. Constantly means 
always engaged in that service of Krishna. And Shila Nam, the behavior. Mm. So this this is describing the, the importance the, the behavior of the devotee. That it must be proper, it must be according to the 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 proper characteristic of a devotee. Srila Prabhupada was on television in America and the man asked him, how would we recognize a Krishna conscious devotee? And so Prabhupada said, oh, he will be a perfect gentleman. So Prabhupada was pointing out that devotees' behavior would be pleasing to people. <laughs> so that behavior is an important aspect of devotional service. Prabhupada writes, the particular word used by Srila Rupa Goswami in this connection is anushilana or cultivation by following the predecessor acharyas. Following the footsteps of the Acharyas, we are sometimes described as Prabhupada Anugas. Or Rupanugas. Means following in the footsteps of Rupa Goswami or Srila Prabhupada. And then Prabhupada talks about this Shilana. He said, as soon as we say cultivation, we must refer to activity. Without activity, consciousness alone cannot help us. So Prabhupada was very Concerned like that, he would like to see everybody engaged in some kind of activity. One time in the temple, Prabhupada said to the temple president, he said, What is this lady doing? What service is she doing? And the temple president said, Oh, Srila Prabhupada, it takes her all day to chant 16 rounds. But Srila Prabhupada said, no, no, you cannot do like that. Everyone must do some activity. They must be engaged in some service. Hmm. Prabhupada wanted us all to be active in some kind of service. Some, sometimes he would write to the temple president and say, everyone should go for Sankirtan. <laughs> and and the, the, the every temple would be empty, everyone just go out on Sankirtan the whole day. So this was how we began the Krishna Consciousness Movement. Prabhupada wanted all to know what are we doing? How many books have we distributed? How many devotees have we made? And Prabhupada wanted to see the results of our activity. 
And Prabhupada, when he came, when he would come to visit us, he wanted activities. We had to arrange programs for him. He didn't just want to, oh, I would just sit here and chant Hare Krishna. He wanted to go out for preaching or to bring people to him for him to preach to. And he wanted us to bring important people to him as well. And in this way, Srila Prabhupada was engaging and showing us how we should engage in Krishna consciousness. So I think it, it's getting lit, shouldn't I? Well, how's the time going? Are there, for, maybe, the time is uh, 9.45 to 11.30. Huh? 9.45 to 11.30. What time is it now? Now it's 11.05. 11.05. You guys not in the world. Huh? You can continue. I can continue some more? Okay. <laughs> All right, yeah. More about this word, Anushilanam. No. So, Prabhupada's, this is taken from a Back to Godhead, which was published in 1960. The word Anu suggests that one should engage himself in the service of the Lord without any interval. Right, I mean, constant, you have to be always engaged. Right, you go out for Sankirtan, you come back from Sankirtan and you worship the deity. And then you have Kirtan. Then you have class. This way, always engage some activity. Hmm. Prabhupada continued, he must be engaged in the service, cent per cent, and always. There must not be any interruption in such progress of devotional service. So this is the understanding of this word anushilanam. Constant engagement, fully active. So we can understand pure devotional service is not such an easy thing. It requires a lot of dedication and absorption. And total commitment to the service of Krishna. So this is a Swarupa Lakshana. Means always present. Hmm? Here you can see again. Anu Kuyena Krishna no Shilanam Bhaktir Uttama. The definition of a pure devotee as given by Rupa Goswami in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu can be summarized thus. His service is favorable and is always in relation to Krishna. So we have highlighted, we've underlined these words which are very crucial in this point. 
First of all, his service. There must be some activity there. Right. We want to know what are you doing for Krishna? And it must be favorable. Means must be approved by the Acharyas. And then always, not just sometimes, but always, and in relation to Krishna. And Krishna means also Krishna's devotees and Krishna's expansions, Krishna's different incarnations. It's very important for us to get the clear picture of what is pure devotional service. And we have to be get we have to be free of the modes of nature. Right? So again, Anu Kuyena. Anu Kuyena, Krishna no Shila no. Anu Kuyena means Krishna should get pleasure from it. Anu Kuyena And then the devotee doing the service must also have the right attitude towards Krishna. That he wants to please Krishna. Just like Kamsa wanted to kill Krishna. Kamsa was always thinking of Krishna. But he was thinking how to kill Krishna. So obviously that attitude is not pleasing to Krishna. Sometimes the demons would come, they would want to fight with Krishna. And sometimes Krishna would enjoy fighting with them also. Just like we know Haranyakashipu and Haranyaksha, they were two doorkeepers, Jai and Vijay. So they took birth just to fight with Lord Vishnu. So it was pleasing to Lord Vishnu to fight with them. But their attitude towards Krishna was not so favorable. So then the word Krishna means Krishna and his different expansions. And also we mentioned Krishna's paraphernalia. Like the Madanga drum. Prabhupada, if he saw the Madranga, Madranga drum on the floor, he would chastise the devotees. If you just place it on the floor, it would be Prabhupada would tell us that you cannot do like this. You must keep the Madranga drum off the ground. 
And similarly also cartels and books and the different things which we use for Krishna's worship, we don't put them on the floor. Even Lakshmi, money, we don't put it on the floor. Because we use Lakshmi for the service of Krishna. We have to take care of it. We don't put these things on the ground. And then Krishna's devotees, pure devotees, but that they are also representative of Krishna. So we are careful in how we deal with Krishna's pure devotees. Careful with their photographs and so on. We have to respect all of these things. And then anushilanam, meaning constant and constant and also activity. And it means we should be following the predecessor acharyas. So activities have to be there and we get the inspiration for activities by hearing about the activities of the other acharyas. We enjoy to hear about the acharyas in our Krishna consciousness line. Hearing about their life is also not different from hearing about Lord Krishna and his pastimes. So it's important for us to always be engaged in these different activities. At the same time, following the acharyas doesn't mean to imitate the acharyas. Some people try to imitate Srila Prabhupada. Somebody may think, oh, Prabhupada went to America on the boat, I will go on the boat. I, Prabhupada went with no money, I will also go with no money. So, of course, you, you can imitate Prabhupada, but you're not going to be, get any results. Like. So, we have to follow the Acharya, follow their example, but not imitate them. We want to understand what is the proper method of following the Acharyas. So Srila Prabhupada and the Acharyas, they have given instructions for us. Rupa Goswami and the other Go Sanatan Goswami, they've written instructions for us. Just like Rupa Goswami, he wrote also the Upadesh Amrita, the nectar of instruction. Nectar of devotion is a bit more lengthy, more verses, a lot more slokas, more complex. But the Upadesh Amrita, the nectar of instruction, there's only 11 verses there. But he takes us from the very beginning of devotional service to the highest level of devotion. 
，但是这个可以把我们从风险幅度最低的层面一直引导到风险幅度最高层面。So and in the course of these verse, those verses, he gives us a lot of instruction. So it's important for us to hear about these acharyas. All right. So we've spoken about the Swarupa Lakshana, the essential characteristics. Now we're going to hear about the marginal characters. Tatasta. Maybe before we'll go on, we'll ask if there's any questions. Anyone has any questions about what we? Yes, Prabhu. How does one continue? From the Pradyan Prabhu, he asked Guru Maharaj, "How can we understand that we are continuously doing service?" It's not Purna Pradyan. Sudarshan. Sudarshan. I'm sorry. I totally missed it. Sudarshan Prabhu. Yeah. Okay. So constant. Yeah, we should understand how to apply this principle of being constantly engaged in Krishna's service. Well, we have to understand that constant activity means also taking care of different duties which we have. Srila Prabhupada says a devotee is not neglectful of his ordinary duties. That they are also part of his devotional service. Just like you have a job, you have a family, you have to take care of these things. So working for Krishna, devotees work in the office or may work in a factory, whatever their work they're doing, but they're doing it for Krishna. And in one purport in the Bhagavad Gita, Prabhupada describes how devotees may be working in the factory or in the office, but they're giving the, the fruit of their work for Krishna. So he said these people are actually in the renounced order of life. So they're actually in the renounced order of life. Because they're not attached to what they're doing. They're doing it for Krishna. Just like Prabhupada told the devotees, you know, in the beginning when they, they come to Krishna consciousness, devotees uh, Prabhupada said, I think you all have to get a job. We need some money to maintain our society. But then when the devotees got jobs, some of, some of them got jobs in a cigarette factory. So Prabhupada said, no, no, you cannot do that. He said, our devotees cannot work in the cigarette factory. So there's some criteria in there, what we can do and what we cannot do. But constantly we have to be thinking of Krishna. And if we have a job, we have to think of it as service to Krishna. And your family, taking care of your family, is also a service to Krishna. 
You see your family members as being connected to Krishna. So in this way constant engagement is certainly possible. And constant engagement doesn't mean that you cannot sleep at night. We take rest so that the body can be healthy for the service of Krishna. Lord Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, don't sleep too much or sleep too little. So Srila Prabhupada told the devotees how much they should be sleeping. How much he, he told some people need a little more, okay, some people can manage on a little less. It's just like eating, some people need to eat more and some people eat less. So we have to maintain the body, doesn't mean don't eat, don't sleep. But we sleep so that we can do more service for Krishna. And we eat, of course we only eat Krishna Prasadam. And we eat enough to keep the body fit and healthy for Krishna's service. So devotional service is very practical. Constant engagement in the service of Krishna. Eating, sleeping, sometimes mating and defending is also there. Producing a Krishna conscious family is service to Krishna. And then also uh, recreation. Sometimes you, you need some recreation just to help us to uh, have more control over our mind. Prabhupada like to go for a walk in the morning. They go for a walk, you go to the different parks and walk. And so it, it's not maya to go out for a walk. This morning they were telling us, better to chant in here, you go outside. <laughs> But if we go together with devotees and we, in the company of other devotees, you're protected. Just like in Vrindavan, Prabhupada told devotees, don't go off on your own and go and wander around the different places in Vrindavan. But if you go with devotees, as a group of devotees, you can go and visit different places. So like that, we have to, we, we need some recreation, we need some activities. It's not that we're totally restricted from all of these things. Of course, we don't go and play golf on the golf course, you know. But you can go swimming if you like. Lord Chaitanya used to swim in the Ganga. And so your swimming is a Vedic sport. And we hear, we were telling this morning about Krishna wrestling. <laughs> so wrestling is also a very sport. <laughs> but be careful. <laughs> so some things are, some activities are there. We, we, need, we need to be engaged 
in Krishna's service. We need activities. Sometimes it's going to work. Sometimes you have to go shopping, you have to go and purchase things for service to Krishna. But we should do everything in Krishna consciousness. In Krishna consciousness, we're carrying the message of Krishna wherever we go. Mahatma Prabhu was with us in Penang. And he was he made an he made an one point he was talking he said he was trying to understand why Srila Jayapataka Maharaj was so successful in spreading Krishna consciousness. Uh, and he, he he made he had the observation, he saw that Wherever Maharaj goes, whatever situation he's in, he's always trying to give Krishna consciousness. All right, every, wherever he's in the hospital or in the ward, in the clinic, whatever, he's always think he's trying to give Bhagavad Gita and trying to give man, some Krishna consciousness to people. Mm, so that is a very wonderful quality of the pure devotee. Constantly thinking how to give Krishna. And everywhere you go, it's got people chanting Hare Krishna. So this is constant engagement. Okay. Any other question? Yes. Then that's not pure devotional service. Because the attitude must be that you want to please Krishna. Right. But if you're only doing it because somebody tells you to do it, and you're doing it reluctantly, not very willingly, then the attitude is not so pleasing. So we have to understand everything. What is important for us to please Krishna? The attitude, there must be that loving feeling for Krishna. That if it pleases Krishna, we should be happy to do it. And we should recognize our own failure, that we're not taking pleasure in the activity. 
我们要认识到自己的缺陷，我们自己并不从中取得自己的快乐。Mm. You understand? Hare Krishna. Okay. Any other question? Yes. Mataji. Those days I do love service. But nowadays because of aging and then having problems with my leg, I really stop service in the temple and then I now I'm practicing at home. Is it okay? But because her leg was not good, right? Yeah, so, all right. Yeah, yeah sometimes these situations are there, difficult. What to do? So, of course, sometimes it, if you approach the temple authorities and explain to them that you're having difficulty because of your health, they may be able to help you. Maybe, you know, maybe the problem, is it a problem because to go to the temple is difficult for you with the bad leg? I have a surgery done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a surgery done on my knee. Oh. Uh, it's an artificial uh, knee replacement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I had a surgery done on my knee. Maybe they could come to the temp come to you and bring you to the temple. The problem is that my son is already moved up from my place and then it's quite difficult to go to the temple most of the time. No, but temple can come and bring you. <laughs> Some, huh? From KL to KL is too far. Oh. So, uh, yes, well, then you have to do service at home. Maybe you can do some service online. Maybe. You know, a lot of devotees are some they get in doing some work. Just like people are often working at home nowadays, they don't go to office, they work at home. So maybe you can also do your devotional service at home. We had one devotee in Vrindavan. There was this one devotee in Vrindavan. His name was Vibhu Chaitanya. So he became a devotee when we opened the temple there in Vrindavan, 1972, 73. And he, he took up the service. He was cooking for the deities. And he used to cook all the offerings. Every day. He was cooking every day in the kitchen. And he did it for many, many years. But then the old age came it became difficult for him to stand so much. So he, they gave him another service. And he was giving Charanamrita. People in Vrindavan come to the temple, see the deity, and they would come and he would give Charanamrita, he would put a drop of Charanamrita in their hand. 
，然后在文达文来看神像，然后他就给大家每个人派发一滴 Charanamrita 在手心里。And after putting the Charanamrita, then he will wash the hand with some water. 然后喝完了 Charanamrita 之后，用一些水来洗手。And then he would dry their hand also. 然后他还给人家擦手。And so in this way he was doing service. And he would do this every day. He did this until he could no longer, until he left the body. So his samadhi is there in Vrindavan. He found some service that he could do. Right, so you're not able to go to temple. You have to find some way you can do some service. So maybe you can do some work online, get a group of people and read Prabhupada's books together and discuss with them. There are many people in your situation that cannot go to temple. But they can read the books at home. So you can organize some people to be with you every day online and just read the book. And tell them about Krishna. Hmm. That would be very nice. You have to find some other way to do service to Krishna. I'm sure there's a lot of other things you could do for Krishna. But if you're staying in Klang, so there's so many people there. There's many people, you can invite them to your home even. And have a program with them. And you can have children come and have a children's class. Find some way to do some service for Krishna. Try to keep yourself active. Mm -hmm. So you have to you have to be thinking how to do it, what to do. Even you cannot walk. You take a chair and you can just sit somewhere. If there's any temple near to your home, you can go to the temple, sit there and just uh, show people Prabhupada's books. It can be outside the temple. You have to think, what can you do to serve Krishna? Service to Krishna is the life of the devotee. So you have to think how I can do service, what can I do? Krishna will help you. Hmm. Yes, Prabhu? Guru Maharaj, Mataji is, uh, is quite popular in Singapore. She has been doing a few nice cooking videos. I think that's amazing service. I'm not in No, 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 but you used to do... I think you did oh. some video recording or so. She was teaching how to cook prasadam. Oh. Wonderful. Yeah, please continue more doing that. Yeah, put on different short videos showing people how to cook some things. <laughs> okay. 
Are they? Very good. Okay, I think we can stop here today. Hare Krishna.